My idea of success now is waking up with a smile, being part of this planet, making things better, living my life on my terms. It is not about materialism. It is not about a job title. It is not about what I do. It's about who I am. Who am I at the end of the day? Who are you when you're stripped of everything? You know, when you don't have that job, when all we've done is define ourselves by how much we're contributing to the corporate world, to the material world. It's now, it's the sense of joy. I'm successful because I'm living a life true to who I am. I am living a life that I believe will bring joy to others and making a smaller mark on the world. I had built a really um, solid career. I was the big fish in the little pond, working on domestic violence and elder abuse and adult guardianships. But it really began to take a toll on me in terms of the amount of work and the responsibilities. I felt very ashamed that my workload and my priorities had shifted so much that everything was about work. And I was exhausted, I was burned out, and it stole my life. I couldn't continue. When I started RV life, keep in mind that I had never slept in an RV, never been in an RV, never driven an RV. But I knew it was a means to get to an end, a place of travel, a place of adventure, a place where I can take care of myself. I was alone, I was with three cats, so not entirely alone. And initially, I wondered what I was doing. You know, what did I just do? I left this house, I left the community. And over time, I realized that I had to get to know who I was again. And it was uncomfortable. And one thing I learned was I have to feel everything. I'm a single mom. I was the responsible one. I'm the one planning. I was you know, working this high level position. I'm the one making decisions. I've always got my stuff together, right? So I didn't realize how much I bottled up my emotions until I hit the RV and I'm on my own and I said, you know what? I'm just gonna feel whatever I want to feel. And I just allowed myself to feel everything. That was the biggest thing. And after about six months, I remember I was in, in uh, Hill Country in Texas and I feel like, you know what? I found out who I was underneath. I found out I'm a pretty good person. I'm still that same little girl that loved to play and had adventures and allowed me to reach something deeper inside that I didn't know was even there. A friend talked about, another RVer talked about a, a moment in time where everything just stood still and they were in the RV, somebody pulled a guitar out, everything was right. It was one of those moments that just feels special. You're where you need to be, everything is in place. But like a dandelion, where the seeds, you've got the seed head and the wind takes it and it's gone, those seeds are dispersed. So you have to recognize when you're having one of those dandelion moments. What if we can create a dream life based on those most extraordinary moments of our life? Doesn't that put a different picture on what we strive for. It's an awakening of, you know what, maybe my dream life doesn't mean I have 20 million dollars and I'm on my own island with my yacht. Maybe the dream life means spending time with my sisters. Maybe the dream life means 
cheering for my favorite football team. Maybe the dream life means kayaking on a lonely lake, watching the sunset. It's very personal. Sometimes little single basic moments seem very ordinary at the moment, but they turn out to be very extraordinary in hindsight. We complicate our lives. You know, we create drama, we have deadlines, we put so much pressure on ourselves. So I grew up on a dairy farm and everything was very basic, right? The cows needed to be milked, the crops needed to be brought in. In a way, I've returned to simplicity. And I think it's what we're striving for, a lot of us are, because we're on social media, we've got to answer 29 emails by two o'clock. We have all of these deadlines that we put on ourselves. I've really discovered time. Time now has sort of stood still. I am driven by the weather, the sunrises, the sunsets, the seasons. That's what drives my life now. And it is freedom. There's less stuff to worry about. There's a simplicity of getting back to the nature and taking in this incredible world in which we live. And then we have the time. I mean, the time is the biggest gift. That's our most cherished asset, time. And this is a gift to be out here. <laughs>